Hey guys, in this video we will be guiding you through Heroic Aachen Dune. Keep in mind the information in the footage in this video is from beta and is subject to change. Upon entering the instance, you will be directed to your left by Soulbinder Talani, who will remove the magical barrier allowing you to proceed down the first hallway. You will not be able to CC any of these first mobs while they are channeling. Clerics will cast Void Shell. This will apply an absorb to themselves and their nearby allies. This cast cannot be interrupted, but the shell can be dispelled. Hoplites do a frontal cleave. Tanks just need to face these away from their group. Ritualists will cast Mind Spike that will do moderate damage to the tank, but this can be interrupted. Soulbinders have two abilities they will cast. Mind Seer will do moderate AoE damage to the group, and it can be interrupted, but you will need to make sure you have an interrupt for their second ability, Bend Will. This will mind control one of your party members. This isn't a very long duration mind control, but it's best to avoid it by making sure it's interrupted. Spirit Tenders will cast a heal called Void Mending, which needs to be interrupted. Zealots will cast Sever Tendon, throwing their axe onto its secondary target dealing damage, inflicting a bleed and slowing the target. The first boss of the instance is Vigilant Cathar. This fight is probably the easiest heroic fight available in Warlords of Draenor. Cathar will cast Sanctified Strike. This creates a crack of holy energy, dealing damage to players standing in the sanctified ground. There is a telegraph allowing you ample time to move before getting caught in its path. Throughout the fight, Cathar will use the ability Holy Shield, throwing his shield dealing holy damage upon impact. Whoever is targeted by this ability will need to move out of the impact zone to avoid the damage. Be aware of where the shield lands and position yourself so you can quickly get behind it in line of sight his next ability, Consecrated Light. Consecrated Light is a channeled spell that will inflict a large amount of holy damage to anyone not hiding behind his shield for 9 seconds. Next, Cathar will begin placing holy patches on the ground called Hollowed Ground. When triggered, they will deal holy damage to anyone within an 8 yard radius. On Heroic, Cathar will cast an ability called Fate. This will erupt all of the hollowed ground at once. Make sure to be far enough away from the hollowed ground to avoid taking large amounts of damage when they erupt. To summarize, the only real trick to this fight is hiding behind the shield. Everything else is just sidestepping AoE that the boss aims at random targets. For the next sets of trash, you will be fighting mobs that you will see in the next boss encounter. Arbiters will cast Arbiter's Hammer that will stun its target and deal additional damage to anyone too close to the stunned target. This needs to be interrupted. They will also charge a random player. This deals minor damage. Maguses will cast Arcane Bolt which deals minor damage and can be interrupted. They will also cast and channel Arcane Bomb. This cannot be interrupted but can be stunned. Arcane Bomb will summon an Arcane Orb that seems to spiral out of the Magus until it eventually stops, dealing a moderate amount of damage to anyone it hits. Soul Priest will cast Psychic Terror that seems to place a purple cloud at the feet of a random player, fearing them once the cast is complete. You will need to utilize stuns as normal interrupts will not work against this ability. Defenders will use their ability Crusader's Strike, increasing the damage their target takes. The Warden is the last notable mob you will encounter before the second boss. He will do an AoE pull on nearby players and he will throw down his weapon dealing periodic shadow damage to anyone standing too close to it.
The next boss is Soulbinder Niami. This can be a healing intensive fight due to all the AoE abilities from Niami herself and from the adds she summons. Niami will primarily cast Mind Spike which can be interrupted. She will cast Shadow Word Pain on random targets that will do moderate initial damage and additional shadow damage over 9 seconds. This should be dispelled. Throughout the fight, Niami will cast her ability Torn Spirits. She will run to one of the groups of dead bodies, reviving them and forcing them to fight for her. These adds consist of the mobs from the trash you had encountered on the way to her. Your priority should be the Magus, then the Arbiters, and then the Defenders. You will need to watch out for Niami begins to cast Soul Vessel. A purple zone will appear on the ground and the group will need to get within the zone to avoid taking damage. So to summarize, keep the adds under control by focusing the Maguses and the Arbiters and cleaving down the Defenders. Also make sure you stand in the middle of the void zone she creates to avoid extra damage. This fight can be a little long due to how quickly she summons the adds, so be prepared. On the way to the third boss, you will be fighting demons that you will see in the next encounter, except the Felborn Abyssal. The Felborn Abyssal will fixate on random players. They need to be kited because they will deal a large amount of damage. They can be slowed, stunned, and rooted. Blazing Tricksters are just small imps that will run around. You will want to avoid crossing paths with them so you don't get hit by their conflagration, which disorients you for 5 seconds. The Felguard will cast Fel Stomp, dealing physical damage to all targets caught in the frontal cone and knocking them back. Tackling Pyromaniacs will constantly cast Fell Blast on random targets. This will deal a significant amount of damage and needs to be interrupted. So the next boss we'll face is Ezekiel. This fight was pretty tough, you will want to do as much damage as you can to the boss before he goes immune and flies up in the air. We would advise using heroism at the start of this fight. Tanks need to be aware of Ezekiel's ability, Fell Lash. This ability will inflict physical damage, knocking the tank back and increasing their physical damage taken for 7.5 seconds. The tank should either pop a cooldown while running back, or should kite the boss for a few seconds to let the debuff fall off. Be careful not to outrange your healer, though. The group will need to position themselves at least 5 yards apart to prevent the dot curtain of flame from spreading. If this dot spreads to too many players, the damage taken by the group will quickly overwhelm your healer. After a set amount of time, Ezekiel will fly into the air and go immune. This will summon adds that you have previously encountered. Stay away from the blazing trickster to avoid getting conflagrated. On Heroic, there are three Pyromaniacs. They need to be interrupted and focused down as soon as possible. Felguards will be your lowest priority. Tanks will face these away from any party members due to their stomp. Periodically, Ezekiel will cast Malevolent Crash, who will leap to a random target dealing damage and creating a pool of green fire. On Heroic, tendrils of green fire will extend out from the pool, leaving patches of flame on the ground. So to summarize, depending on how much damage you can manage to deal before the first set of adds, this fight can range from difficult to overwhelming. The adds have a sizable amount of health, leaving you very little time to actually damage the boss, and eventually you will be overrun with blazing imps. Your group needs to maximize their damage on the boss as best as possible while handling the adds and their mechanics properly. The trash before the last boss consisted of three warlocks, one for each spec. The first warlock is Dorag the Dominator. 
He is an Affliction Warlock and he will start out with an Imp. The Imp can generally be ignored or even CC'd if your group has the ability to do so. Drag will continuously cast Shadow Bolt and apply Unstable Affliction. Healers do not want to dispel Unstable Affliction because it will silence you. He can summon additional demons like the Fellhound, but DPS should just stick to focusing down the Warlock. The second Warlock is Gul Kosh. He is the Demonology Warlock and will start out with a Wrath Guard. We chose to focus down his pet due to its AoE ability Wrath Storm. The Warlock will continuously cast Shadow Bolt and you will need to interrupt the ability Drain Life to prevent him from healing. The third Warlock is Grom Tosh the Destructor. He is the Destruction Warlock and will start out with his Voidwalker. You will simply just focus him down since he will sack his Voidwalker when engaged. Stay out of the Reign of Fire and you can interrupt when he casts Incinerate or Immolate. Otherwise, Immolate can be dispelled. Terran Gore is the final boss of the instance and is unique in that what version of him you fight will change from run to run. Our group happened to fight the Demonology version, and so this god will deal primarily with those abilities, but there is a common theme among each version that you might face. No matter what version he takes on, Terran Gore will have different filler spells such as Shadow Bolt, Incinerate, or Touch of Chaos. These do not need to be interrupted, but they can be. The most important abilities that you will need to watch out for and definitely interrupt are either Drain Life or Chaos Bolt, depending on his spec. There are also several dots Terangora can cast on random players that will need to be dispelled. These are Immolate, Corruption, or Curse of Exhaustion. The abilities that will need to be avoided are Reign of Fire, Demonic Leap, or Chaos Wave. There are a couple special things to know about the Affliction version, however. The person affected by Seed of Malevolence needs to move away from party members before it explodes. Also, healers need to avoid dispelling Unstable Affliction as this will deal a significant amount of shadow damage and silence you for several seconds. On Heroic Difficulty, an Abyssal will also join the fight. This mob is just like the trash mob from earlier, randomly fixating on a target for a short duration and should be killed as a new one will join the fight every 30 seconds or so. These are susceptible to roots, slows, and stuns. Our strategy for the Demonology version of Terran Gore was to tank him in the middle of the platform and have the rest of the group stand on a different side of him, forming a cross. This allowed each person plenty of room to kite the Abyssal, while also helping to make sure that only one player was hit by Chaos Wave. We made sure to maintain slows on each Abyssal and the range mostly focused on killing it with our one melee player helping when it was near the middle, but otherwise focusing on the boss. Due to the amount of health the Abyssals have, this fight can be quite long, but the group's damage taken was pretty manageable as long as multiple people weren't taking damage from the Chaos Wave or the Abyssal. We hope you have enjoyed this video and found the information helpful to you and your group. If you are interested in more heroic dungeon guides or want to know more about our team, check out the links provided in the description below.